All right, so by now I hope you've picked up your uh, uh, worms from school. Um, and uh, we're going to have a little fun today. I hope you're not squeamish. Don't be squeamish. This is going to be fun. Um, and I think you're really going to enjoy this. So what you're going to need for today's investigation, you're going to need um, a little cup that has a little bit of water in it. You're also going to need a plate, a little paper plate or styrofoam plate, something like that. Um, your worms and the little baggie of oats that I put into your worm bag. You are also going to need this uh, paper, the worm outline, what are the parts of a red worm. And you're going to need something to write with. Optional, if you don't want to use your fingers today. Oh geez, I was outside. Well, I just noticed because I'm on camera that I have makeup for my mask. Sorry girls, <laughs> I look like a raccoon. Um, you're also going to need either, um, I'm just using the end of a wooden paintbrush because it's nice and smooth, no sharp parts on it. If you have a popsicle stick or something like that, this will, you can use to handle the worms with instead of your fingers if you feel that way. If you have plastic gloves because you don't want the worms to actually get on your skin, put on some plastic gloves as well, but I'm just going to use my hands. So, um, today we're learning about the structure of red worms. Okay, we've done the structure of fish, the structure of birds, the structure of beavers, the structure of trees, the structure of all kinds of things. Um, and this is no different. We're going to, you know, we even did structure of paper, structure of wood, right? So, structure of fabric. So, everything has a structure. Everything. And it has a structure for its purpose in this world. And so today we are going to learn the structure of red worms. Okay? So, what you're going to need to do is take your red worms. Okay? And very carefully, if you don't care about dumping them right out on your table, then dump them right out on your table. I only have like a little tiny area here. So I'm going to dump them onto this little paper plate. And I have put a couple, I don't know if you can see them, uh, a little bit of water in this plate. Because I don't want to drown my worms, but I don't want to dry them up either. Because if you dry them out, then they're going to get really sick and probably die. So... And we're going to have them out for a little while. So, very carefully empty the soil and the dirt and all of that onto the plate. This is going to be tricky. I'm going to have to hold this up like the whole time, aren't I? Okay. And if you can't, I can already see a worm right there. If you cannot already see a worm, you can take your you know, paintbrush and or whatever, and just gently, gently, gently break up the soil around the worm. And you should all have two or three worms in your, at least two. I know I put at least two in everybody's um, cup. All right. So this is a red worm. All right. It's a type of earthworm. Right? That means it lives in the earth. All right, it needs, it has certain needs like earth um, for its shelter to live. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do next, and I really hope you're not squeamish, but if you are, maybe there's somebody in your family, a brother or an older sister or a mom that's not squeamish about holding these little creatures. And what I want you to do is I want you to pick one up. See how I can very easily pick it up with a paintbrush? I'm not afraid to put it in my hand. I'll put it in my hand, no problem. But um, they don't feel slimy. They're just cold. They just feel cold. That's all. And they're, they're soft. Okay. And um, you're going to put it in just for a second in your little cup of water. Okay, and that's just to wash off any of the soil that's on it. And now this could make it a little tricky to get them back out. But 
gentle, 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 always gentle. Sometimes it will be easier to just get the little brush and wrap the little worm right around the handle of the brush. Perfect, carefully, and then back in your hand it goes. And guess what I'm going to ask you to do now? You got it. Observe. All right, I want you to take the next good, oh, probably 10 minutes, all right, just observing your red worm. If your hand starts to get a little dry, just grab a little couple drops from the cup, right? Just dip, you, dip your fingers in your water from your cup and then just let it out on your hand so your hand doesn't get dry because you don't want the worm to dry up. So keep, keep your hand nice and uh, nice and moist and watch what your little worm does. 10 minutes, okay? So go ahead, pause this video, and try to handle the worm the least amount as possible. We don't, we can't have these die on us. You should have another one in there, but we can't have these die on us on the first day, okay? So, yeah, let them crawl right around you. I want you to, to observe as much as you can about this worm. What is it going to do? I'm not going to give anything away. Just go and observe. Pause the video. All right. So I really hope you sat there for the full 10 minutes and observed your worm. I didn't get a chance to, obviously, because I can't stop the video and start it up again. So, but I've done this enough times to know what I'm doing and what I'm looking for. Okay, so now that you've had time to observe your worm and let it do its thing, I, I can tell that we're getting a little dry here, so I'm going to put a little bit more water on my hand. Okay, keep my, if you have like a little spray mister, that's even better. Just mist your hand. All right. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a few questions now, and this is the point of the video where maybe you can record um, the thinking um, so we can post it to Seesaw. All right, so look at that, look at that, that's so cool. So which end is the head and which end is the tail? And how do you know? Which end is the head and which end is the tail? And how do you know? Are you sure about that? What is the worm's head doing? Ooh, ooh, look, look. Dry here. What is the worm's head doing? Look at the color of the worm's body. Is it the same color in all places? Can you tell the top side of the earthworm from the bottom side of the worm? Now I want you to look at the rings or the segments 
that make up the worm's body. Can you see the rings that go around the worm? Are the segments all the same size? How many do you think there are? Do the segments all look the same? Can you see a larger, more swollen looking segment? Oops, I dropped my worm. That larger, swollen area is called a clitellum. Or another way to say clitellum is saddle. Yes, just like a saddle that you put on a horse. It's not always easily seen on red worms. But if you have a larger, older red worm, which many of you do, you can definitely see the larger swollen ring called the clitellum or the saddle, okay? I hope you can see it. Do you think your worm has a mouth? What about eyes and ears? A nose? Now I want you to take your worm and gently place him back on top of the soil pile on your plate and observe what it does. Pretty cool, huh? I think it's pretty cool. So we talked about body. The worm has a body. We know that the worm has a top side and a bottom side. We know that the worm's body is made up of segments or rings. And that there's one large swollen segment called the, yes, the saddle, the clitellum. Let's clap that out. Clitellum. How many syllables is that? Clitellum. Three. Okay. So what is the structure of red worms? What are the parts of red worms? When you take out your um, when you take out your were, uh, your outline here, I gave you two because I have kids who like to do more than one, or if they make a mistake on one, they can cut it off and have the other one. All right. And so hold on. I'm just gonna fold this. A little bit like this. Put it up here so you can still see it. Okay. What are the parts of a red worm? And then this says a worm, right? So your next word is going to be has, right? A worm has, I'm going to write as has and then we just went over by all of those questions and all of that observation we just went over all the parts of the red worm the structure of the red worm all right so when i asked the question okay when i asked the question does the which end is the head and which end is the tail i'm going to tell you right now Okay, so this on the diagram here, 
Remember I told you that there's a large swollen section? Okay, that's called the, yes, the saddle or the clitellum. All right, we can write saddle. Why not? So let's label that part first, the saddle. Sad, sad, oh, saddle, okay? So we have saddle, clitellum. And right in front of the saddle or the clitellum is the head. So it's gonna be the head is about, I don't know, a little bit a ways away from the, um, the saddle. And the head is also pointy like the tail, so I'll kind of make it like a pointier looking. There we go. So if you observe your worm again, okay, you'll be able to tell the difference between the head and the, the tail by the distance it is from the clitellum. The clitellum is closer to the head, okay? Of the worm. And now what you need to do is I want you to label the rest. So if this is the head, this is the tail, right? Tail. And if this is the tail, this is the head. What are we missing? Yes, we're missing the rings, right? The rings. And what I do for that is I just draw lines like this. All the way around. Like that. They have a little bit of curve to them, but the worm is curvy. So, the last thing that I want you to do, because all we really were doing today was observing and noting the parts. And yes, I do want you to write all of those parts um, uh, in this paragraph here. So, a worm has a head, saddle, tail, ring, rings. Okay, um, and, and I want you to write those things down here and then you can glue that into your science notebook with today's date. And that's your job for today. So then what I want you to do is I want you to very carefully scoop your worms and all the soil. If you want to scoop it in with this, you can. Back into your little cup. Okay. All of the soil, they, they, they love, love, love the soil, and it will help them to not dry out. Because as you can see that that soil is very moist and very um, rich. It's actually the best soil to plant flowers and seedlings in, so don't throw it away. Uh, even this little bit will help grow a beautiful, beautiful plant. Um, so get it all in there. That's like soil gold. Okay. And then take a little bit, not all of the, the oats that I gave you, but sprinkle a few oats on top like that. And that's a nice little snack for your worm until tomorrow. And you do not have to put this in the refrigerator. These worms have never been refrigerated, actually. You can just keep them in a um, kind of dark, cool place. Okay? It doesn't even have to be, like, dark. I just wouldn't let them go into, like, direct sunlight, you know? Just a regular, non-sunlit place. You don't have to hide them anywhere. And relatively cool. And they shall be fine. Okay? They will be fine. If you have an apple or something later, throw in a little tiny piece of apple. They love that, too. All right, so that's your job for today. Uh, science notebook, answer the questions. Can't wait to see all of your wonderful thinking on Seesaw.
All right, talk to you later. Bye.